Hey Tubers, it's Ben the Curious Consumer. Today we're going to be tackling a subject that's pretty sore to a lot of people, especially during this time where you have a lot of free time on your hands and you just want to get some gaming done. What I'm talking about is stick drift. It is an issue with video game controllers of all sorts. PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo. So stick drift is an issue that uh, would I would love to see fixed in future iterations of video game consoles and controllers and hopefully the next generation has better components that don't have that drifting issue. What causes this? What causes the stick to drift? Um, and really what it is, it comes down to is, it's just like dust. If you're eating chips or Cheetos, I know I caught my son eating chips during gameplay and you know, next thing you know, a couple weeks later, his controller's faulty and I have to fix it. So I wanna show you guys or go over a couple things that you have at your disposal today that if you're in a situation like this pandemic, you may not have the ability to go out and buy a new controller. You could use online retailers, but do we really have enough money to buy another $60 controller or whatever. Maybe we can fix it with the things that we have. So there's a couple things that I wanna just go over with you guys. Uh, first off, in certain cases with certain consoles like the Nintendo Switch, they allow you to recalibrate the controller. So you can recalibrate it. I'm gonna show you how to do that process today. Um, another thing you can do is, uh, say you have, I have a just a faulty old generic PlayStation 4 controller board here that I've taken parts off of, which you'll see in a video a little bit later on, because I'm going to be using parts from this board. You could desolder the thumbsticks and replace them with new ones. And these thumbsticks are are a dime a dozen. You can pick them up pretty cheap for a package, I think six or eight on Amazon. I'll leave links in the description below for these things if you want to try it. Or if you just don't have another controller lying around that you're not using anymore, you can order these parts and use the parts right off of these, these pieces here to replace the parts on your controller. So that brings us to the third um, way of fixing the controller, and that's by replacing the little sensor pads that are inside the thumbsticks. So let's jump into the video. We're gonna take a look right here. I'm gonna show you how to calibrate first. I'm gonna show you a little bit about the desoldering method, which is kind of a pain in the butt in certain situations if you don't have the right equipment but it, it can be done and uh and then of course i'll show you the last way which i think is probably the little bit more efficient way to do it now remember these uh, i'm assuming your controllers are broken at this point so if you're going to be doing this let me just put out a disclaimer that you'll be doing this at your own risk now the way i look at it is if my controller is drifting it's not a usable piece of hardware, and so I am going to take it apart and try to fix it myself. And I've I've been that way with a lot of the things that I own. So just know that going in that your controller could probably be broken, but you can repair it on your own. It will void any warranty that you may have on that controller if your controller has a warranty. Try a couple of these first steps for calibration. I know there's a, a calibration method for the PlayStation 4 controllers that is similar to what you use for something like a scuff doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a great recalibration method because it's not a Sony recalibration method. I know there's definitely a method on the console for the Nintendo Switches. So we're gonna get, jump into that real quick. If you have a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller or regular controller, this would be an easy way for you to try to figure out whether or not your controller is actually faulty or is something that could be fixed simply by using the software. So we are here on the Nintendo Switch. You see I have my controller here. Um, it It is a little, wonky at times and I'm going to show you how this how to do this but this is how you would recalibrate your controller on your Nintendo Switch so I'm going to go right over here to the system settings option click on that and I'm going to go down when I go down I'm going to go to controllers and sensors so now you can see that my controller is drifting up so I'm going to go to controllers and sensors this gets really frustrating by the way if you're trying to do this and you can't get it to go on the thing that you want to select so we're going to go i'm going to try to use a directional pad maybe it'll be a little i'll have a little bit more um oh, I did, of course i hit that so now you can see again it's drifting up so i got to go back down and i want to calibrate my control stick so once i get to this calibrate control sticks in the menu i'm going to click on a thumbstick now you can see here that there's a circle and a cross on it this dot should be right here in the center and it isn't so that means that this controller is not calibrated correctly so there are two ways to check your calibration first is this way to calibrate your controller if at any time you are on your system and you're synchronizing a controller and let's say somebody's 
uh, you, you have it sitting down and it's laying on its face or whatever and like the thumbsticks off to the side, it can calibrate it the wrong way. So you want to calibrate the right way. So let's double check and see if this will work. So we are going to hit the X button for calibrate, recalibrate only if there's a problem. So only if your stick is drifting or if it's not in the center, that's the only time you want to calibrate. Otherwise you can cause some issues to the calibration of the controller. So we're going to calibrate it. I'm going to follow the on-screen instructions. So it told me to go to the right, go down, go over and up, and then turn twice around. So we're going to go around once, twice, let's go a third time, and it says it's complete. When we hit OK, that's what we want. We want the controller to calibrate here. So you see how there's a, this is blue, and there's a plus in the middle. That means that we've calibrated the thumbstick here, so now it's recentered. So instead of taking apart your controller and replacing the parts on the inside, that's what you would do to recalibrate the controller without taking it apart. So let's go back and let's check the other stick while we're at it. So we'll click it here, and it looks like it's pretty calibrated, perfectly fine. It keeps recentering. There's one more thing you can check on here as well, is by testing your input devices. Now, that's the next option here, is testing your input devices. Te testing your controllers and buttons, or you can test the touch screen if you have your switch in handheld mode. But in this case, I wanna test the buttons on the controller. So when you press a button here on the controller, you'll see it comes up on the screen. And when you do that, it's letting you know that those buttons are working. If, in fact, those buttons didn't work, then you probably want to take apart your controller and just clean the contacts on the inside. That way you don't have any, um, any issues with it in the future. So we're going to press and hold a button down to end the test. So that's how you recalibrate a controller on a Nintendo Switch. Let's jump into the next method, which would be desoldering the thumbsticks on the board. So this is the thumbstick itself. This is the part of the thumbstick that you can order online. Again, I will leave links in the description below so you guys can see um, what this part is and how much it is and how many you get in a package. So here is a PlayStation board and you can see by desoldering, um, you, you would have to desolder all of these points, which is funny because, I mean, it's a lot. You've got the three here, the three here, which actually control your X, Y axis. Then you've got the four base solder joints. Those four base solder joints are for the stick to actually hold on to the board. And then you have your four other points for the button press. Now, this is a pretty time consuming process. And I would say be very, very careful because now what ends up happening with, with this board is if you heat it up too much, or let's say you didn't heat up the solder enough and you tried pulling the piece off from the last time, you could rip one of the contacts out and cause some issues. Now, it's few and far between if that happens, but it is a possibility. I've had it happen to me once or twice. Or you can do what I have done here and essentially pull off these pieces here, the sensor pieces. So you see the, the, the stick goes on like this and you have these covers. Now these green, if you have this brand, it's green and this brand is black, but these covers cover up the sensors and your sensors look like this. It's just a little piece of plastic and you, you'll see there's a little piece of metal here that comes around that circular metal. And in this case, it looks blue, but on the ones that I took out of here, they were just silver. So this one's a worn down, uh, this one's worn down, so I had to replace this one. This one came out of another controller that I fixed. This piece right here sticks out. So you'll see there's a piece, and that's the top. So that's how you know what's the top from the bottom. So you'll have these two little plastic points, that's the bottom part, and you have this little wavy point on the top. So I have some video here that I'll show you and I'll do a voiceover with because I did this yesterday on a controller and you'll see me actually take this controller apart, take out the, the good sensors and replace the old sensors in another controller. So let's take a look at that video right now. Okay, so as you can see, I've already taken apart my controller here. This is the thumbstick in question. So we're going to be replacing the sensor pads in here today. First things first, just make sure that any debris or any kind of dust or anything is cleaned out from around that area. 
This is my replacement part. So if you have an old controller lying around the house that you haven't used in a while, or maybe it's broken, uh, you could reuse some of the parts that are inside. So we're going to use the sensor pads that are inside underneath these two little black covers. Now, if you could see that in the camera, probably a little better right there. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pry the little plastic covers back and take the sensor pads out. And then we're going to pry back the sensor covers on this thumbstick here and replace them. So my recommendation, grab a small flathead screwdriver and what you're going to do is place it in between the plastic and the metal and you're just going to do a little prying. There are little latches on the top. Once you start prying a little bit like I'm about to here, just like I said, a light bit of pressure. You don't want to push too hard and stab your finger. But once you once you pry it a little bit, it's going to pop. Once it pops, you're going to see that I could just push this right back. You're going to apply a decent amount of pressure to get it further back. There is a little plastic piece from the stick that's still in there that holds those in place. And it can only go in two ways. The best way to figure out the two ways, earlier in the video I told you and I showed you, it's that metal piece is closest to the top of the stick. So you want to make sure that the little wavy metal piece is closest to the top. You'll know what I'm talking about once you get them out. But you could use needle nose pliers in some cases. You can do it just with your fingertips, uh, depending on how big your fingers are. Uh, I use needle nose pliers. It's just a little easier. Now we're going to replace the new ones, making sure that we keep the old ones separate. Now, you can't really see it there, but there is a little discoloration on the sensor pad. When you see that discoloration on there, you know you're doing a good job. You know you're definitely getting rid of that. Now, when you put the pad in, you want to apply a decent amount of pressure to get those clips to clip back onto the thumbstick. Once you do both of those, you're done. Just make sure that that goes in the right way and boom, fixed. Okay, and you can see there that it's a little bit more efficient. Hopefully that video showed you a little bit of something. Those are the three basic ways to check your controllers to see if you can fix the problem. Recalibration, replacing the sensors, or then soldering the pieces back together. I hope you guys found this video useful and helpful, and I hope I helped you out during this time of need so you don't have to go out and spend a ton of money on replacement parts. And like I said, sometimes it could be just as easy as a $6 package of these bad boys that can help fix your issues. Well, guys, that's gonna do it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it very informative. If you did, please drop us a like down below, give us some thumbs up. What is your all-time favorite controller that you had growing up? Or have you ever had experienced stick drift and how frustrating is it for you? So guys, check us out with any of our other videos that are coming up. If you need something to do, check out my other channel with my son called the Pinterest Pirates. On that channel, we do science experiments and we're putting together a bunch of different videos for you guys to take a look at for things to do at home during this time with your kids. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter as well. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay curious and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.